With new generation of missile systems, the next war will be the last one. The U.S. Defense Department is on track with its ambitions to deploy its first new hypersonic weapon by the summer of 2023 and to develop more offensive hypersonic and anti-hypersonic weapons defense capabilities following a recent flurry of prototype testing. Weapons that move between 5 and 25 times the speed of sound, or 1 to 5 miles per second, 1.6 to 8.0 kilometers per second, are known as hypersonic weapons. Weapons would be classified as subsonic or supersonic below these speeds, but at these speeds, the atmosphere's molecules split apart, forming a plasma, making control and communication challenges. Even while directed energy weapons like lasers may travel at faster speeds, they are nonetheless classified as a separate type of warfare. Currently, China, India, Iran, Russia, and the U.S. have created fully operational hypersonic weapons in the form of gliders, ballistic missiles, rail guns, and air-breathing cruise missiles. These countries have their own autonomous projects and have shown sustained hypersonic combustions. With that, Let's kick off this video and look into the new hypersonic missiles that the USA has been developing. In an early October interview with Defense News, Lt. Gen. Robert Rash, the Army's Director of Hypersonic Weapons Systems Acquisition, stated that the service will stick to its schedule to deliver the long-range hypersonic weapon, LRHW, a ground-launched boost glide missile system by the end of the fiscal year 2023. In September 2021, the Army finished delivering the LRHW ground equipment to Joint Base Lewis McCord in Washington State. This equipment included the Battery Operations Center, transporter erector launchers, vehicles, and trailers. Before its initial deployment, the LRHW missile will undergo two more Pentagon tests, the first of which will include launching the fully constructed missile from its ground support apparatus according to Rash. Although Rash stated that the booster stack operated satisfactorily, the most recent test of the system's glide body, which is shared with the Navy's Hypersonic Weapons System program, failed in June. The LRHW weapons system is one of 35 systems that the Army hopes to deploy by 2030 in order to become what it deems to be a completely modernized force. The Army wants to deploy 24 systems in the fiscal year 2023. On September 22nd, the Air Force granted Raytheon Technologies, together with its program partner Northrop Grumman, a $985 million contract to begin work on the hypersonic attack cruise missiles operational, as opposed to prototype capabilities. In order for the missiles to be ready for their anticipated installation on F-15 fighter planes in the physical year 2027, Raytheon will supply two of the missile batteries. Pentagon began the program in the physical year 2022. According to Air Force Chief of Staff General Charles Brown, the system will provide our commanders with tactical flexibility to utilize fighters to hold high value, time-sensitive targets at risk, while preserving bombers for other strategic objectives. The Air Force also stated that as part of a cooperative project agreement, the United States and Australia would continue to work together on the design and development of the system. The system's initial all-around flight test will be conducted using Australia's testing facilities. The U.S. in September, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin and Japanese Defense Minister Yasukazu Hamada agreed to keep working together to develop anti-hypersonic weapon defense systems. According to a Japanese Defense Ministry transcript of the meeting, the officials decided to continue collaborative analysis on counter-hypersonic technology and, depending on its success, to commence discussion of joint research on technologies and components. The joint effort on new hypersonic technologies is in reaction to developments in hypersonic weapons by China and Russia, as well as to tensions with China over Taiwan. The Kinzhal short-range ballistic missile and the avant-garde intercontinental boost glide vehicle, which were developed by Moscow and Beijing respectively in 2017 and 2019 respectively, are both examples of hypersonic weaponry. Russia used Kinzhal's hypersonic weapons against Ukraine in the spring marking the first use of new hypersonic weapons in warfare. On the other hand, according to U.S. Deputy Defense Secretary Kathleen Hicks, the Kinzhal missiles have been employed virtually to no effect. In related news, 
The Washington Post reported on October 17th that Chinese military research organizations working on hypersonic capabilities, like the Chinese Academy of Aerospace Aerodynamics, have purchased hypersonic missile technology, including computer-aided engineering software and hardware like interferometers, developed by American defense companies through middlemen. An unnamed Chinese expert working on hypersonic technology told the newspaper that in this situation, American technology is superior. We need foreign technology to perform some things. The development of a defensive architecture to counter incoming hypersonic weapons from enemies have been given priority in the United States. The glide phase interceptor anti-hypersonic missiles, for which Raytheon and Northrop are developing a prototype, will be part of this defense system along with satellites for a missile warning and tracking system. The Tranche Zero missile surveillance and transport satellites were supposed to be launched in low Earth orbit for the first time by the Space Development Agency, SDA, in September. But supply chain issues and contract complaints forced a postponement until at least mid-December. 20 communications satellites from Lockheed Martin and York Space will be among the 28 satellites of Tranche Zero along with eight missile tracking infrared sensor satellites from SpaceX and L3 Harris. The second satellite launch for this batch is planned for March. Beginning in April 2025, L3 Harris and Northrop will start launching the 28 Tranche 1 infrared sensing satellites in groups of seven. The hypersonic ballistic tracking space sensor, which will consist of satellites in low Earth orbit with medium field of view sensors to monitor missiles and provide data required for targeting, is being developed by the Missile Defense Agency, MDA, at the same time. A comprehensive permanent overhead satellite system for missile early warning and tracking, especially for hypersonic weapons, will be formed by all of the satellites being developed under the aegis of the SDA and MDA. By guaranteeing funding for the programs at the Defense Department in fiscal years 2022 and 2023, the Biden administration carried on its predecessor's strategy to hasten the development and deployment of new hypersonic weapons capabilities. Because not all necessary legislation is passed through Congress, the President has yet to sign the complete national defense authorization and appropriations measures for the fiscal year 2023. Congress is anticipated to start debating the defense budget measure in the middle of November, as the current continuing resolution that is funding federal operations expires on December 16th. Let's shift our focus to another weapon. The U.S. Air Force declared that the booster for the Air Launched Rapid Response Weapon, ARRW, had undergone a successful test off the coast of California. The ARRW test involved lifting the rocket under a B-52H's wing before launching it. The weapon did not separate from the plane during earlier tests. According to a statement from Lockheed, this second successful test validates ARRW's ability to attain and survive operational hypersonic speeds, capture critical data for use in further flight tests, and certify safe separation from the aircraft. Air Force Brigadier General Heath Collins, Program Executive Officer of the Armament Directorate said, We now have completed our booster test series and are ready to move forward to all-up round testing later this year. The booster and the warhead are included in the all-up round. At around 6,200 kilometers, 3,853 miles per hour, or more than five times the speed of sound, hypersonic weapons go through the upper atmosphere. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, said that it successfully carried out the first test of its Operational Fires hypersonic weapon in a separate hypersonic weapon test. At the White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico, the test was carried out. The successful test signaled advancement in the several U.S. attempts to produce hypersonic weapons, which have occasionally been hampered by test failures, financial concerns, and rising worries that the country is losing ground in an arms race between superpowers. A ground launch device called Operational Fires is designed to rapidly and precisely strike important time-sensitive targets while breaching current adversary air defenses. In the fiscal year 2022, DARPA asked for and got $45 million for op fires. The use of an existing high-mobility artillery rocket system, HIMARS launcher, similar to those used in Ukraine, is one of Lockheed Martin's proposal for the DARPA weapon. The common hypersonic glide body, 
A novel kind of hypersonic missile was tested unsuccessfully on June 29th at the Pacific Missile Range Facility in Hawaii. Defense industry players intend to profit from the development of hypersonic weapons by creating new systems for their detection and destruction in addition to manufacturing them. As the world's attention switched to the new arms race for an emerging type of weapon, arms producers such as Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman Corporation, and Raytheon Technologies Corporation all bragged about their hypersonic weapons programs to investors. Hence, this brings an end to our Blastic video, but we will come back with some new and interesting videos of the future in the future. Till then, make sure that you like our videos and do share your views and opinions with us in the comments section below. Subscribe to the channel, New World Tech, to get videos from us regularly and also do not forget to hit the bell icon to never miss an update. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Until then, peace.